Welcome to 5 and 5 from the One Stop Co-op Shop, where I discuss five key elements of a game in about five minutes. I'm Michael Kelly, and today I'm looking at the first two games in the Hunted series by Gabe Barrett, Mining Colony 415, and Kobayashi Tower. Quick disclaimer that I was sent review copies of these. I previously covered the third game in the series, Hunted Woad Ridge, and was really impressed by it. How do I feel about the earlier iterations? Let's find out and get to the list. First, for my number five, I want to talk about the tests in each game, which is a bit of a mix for me. And tests in both games are these cards that come out of the deck and give you a sudden roll or toss to determine whether you gain a benefit or suffer some kind of negative. And first of all, they're really nice and thematic, especially if you know Die Hard or Aliens, the movies these games are based upon. They give you little bursts of theme without complicating the mechanics too much, like Lars, the enemy leader, contacting you on a radio and trying to negotiate, or an alien jumping out of a vent at your face. So the tension of these cards is excellent, but the part I don't like as much is how they interact with the health system. Because when your health is above the halfway mark, you have a much easier time passing these tests, and once it dips below that point, suddenly you have a very low chance of passing them. And that's where these cards can sometimes create an unfun, poor get poor scenario, where one card does a bunch of damage to you, and then suddenly you're too hurt to have a good chance of succeeding at other cards in the future. So it's not always great, and I kind of wish the health was separated from your test success instead of being integrated so much. And I have a related point at number four, also a mix, although it leans a bit more pro, and that's the combat system in the two games. So when things don't go your way in one way or another, you'll be confronted by terrorists or aliens, depending on which game you're playing, and you'll either roll dice or toss tokens to try to defeat them. And like with the test, the tension of these combats is great, and they also add in some nice resource management, because in both games you have weapons and ammo, and you can spend time to reload, and you might want to use like your bigger weapons or save them for the boss, lots of fun choices is there. But my one negative for combat that brings this a bit into mixed territory is that I think they put too many negative consequences for fighting. And what I mean is, not only do you run out of ammo, which takes time to reload, not only do you take damage, which can make you lose the game or get worse on tests, as previously mentioned, but they add in one more consequence in that every time you attack, you lose one time, kind of your main track and resource for the game. And this is where I think it's a step too far, because it almost makes combat something you want to absolutely avoid. And I get that that could be what the game was going for, but I think combat is kind of tense and fun, and I wish the game didn't punish you so much for engaging in it. But the big part of combat and test that I haven't discussed much yet is my number three, and it is a pro for me, and that's the resolution system in both games. Because in Kobayashi Tower, you're rolling dice for your attacks and for your tests, and trying to beat different target numbers, whereas in Mining Colony 415, it's a little dexterity game where you're tossing these tokens into the box and trying to get them on or in in a little circle or square. Now I'm fully aware that some gamers might hate one or both of these resolution systems, like I myself am not a huge fan of dexterity games generally, but I found them very tense, very fun, and the cool thing is if you like one way more than the other, you can pick which of the two games you want to buy. Like I think even though I'm not a dexterity person, I ended up kind of leaning towards the Mining Connie 415 method because it's just so wild and tends to throw your tokens and hope they get in that little circle and hope you don't die a horrible death. Lots of fun, at least least for me. Finally, for my last few points, I'm going to get into the absolutely core mechanics of the entire Hunted series. And first, I'm going to talk about the icons. So you'll have these cards coming out in a row, more about that in a moment, and they'll have both icons on the left you can use, and icons on the right that they cost to provide you different benefits, like moving deeper into the location deck to secure victory, uh, getting items to help you defeat enemies and such. And overall, I think this is a really nice, tense system to force tough choices on the player, because you'll have these icons, and you could use this one to get closer to winning the game, or you could use it to get an amazing weapon that'll make the final boss and other enemies easier. And making those little choices with the limited time and resources you have is really interesting on a consistent basis. And that goes right into my number one, another pro for me, a very simple mechanic, but one that works great, and that is the laying out of cards in your action row. So on each turn, you can either choose to draw a card or discard all the cards and pay a time by hiding. Such a simple choice, but it works so well to add a lot of thoughtful decisions, push your luck, and tension to the game. Because if too much noise comes out or if too many terrorists come out, then the entire row gets discarded and you have to fight them, which as I already mentioned, has a lot of cost to it. So you as a player are forced again to make these really tough choices. Do you want to hide every time it gets slightly dangerous, but then you'll probably run out of time? Do you want to 
to push your luck, but then you might lose that amazing card you're trying to save up for. And a quick note on two-player co-op, even though the game is clearly mainly designed for solo, I actually think the co-op works very well, and the fact that you have this shared row that can have cards in it from either of you, but put both of those cards in jeopardy if one of you gets rid of all your cards in your row, makes the game tense in a slightly different way, and this means this is one I can recommend for one or two-player play. It works well with both. Overall, I think the Hunted series is going to appeal to solo players and two-player co-op players who enjoy quick, tense little card games with a fun theme. I would compare it favorably to something like Unbroken. On the other hand, if you hate randomness, if you don't like a high challenge because this game is tough, or if you want a meatier, more strategic experience because this game is pretty light, you might want to avoid this. And if you click the link that just popped up, you can watch two playthroughs, one solo and one co-op, as well as my video for Hunted Woad Ridge, which is on Kickstarter right now. Good gaming, everyone, and I'll see you at the next stop.